Hello, welcome to the mid-September market update. My name is Amadeep, I'm here with my colleague Brenda. We're both senior analysts at AHDB Cereals and Oilseeds Market Intelligence. Now, over the past couple of weeks or so, the grain prices have continued their, their descent. Looking at the graph here, if we look at the blue line, which shows UK feed wheat futures, you can see that in mid-August, um, prices were around the £120 per tonne mark, but since then have um, almost touched the £110 per tonne mark. Only recently, in, couple of, um, in the past couple of days, have prices actually started increasing very slightly. Now, the grain price trend has also been replicating oilseed prices, as you can see from the graph here. The main um, catalyst behind the rise in prices recently has been the USDA's latest supply and demand estimates. Brenda, what, did, what was the main summary points that the report showed? Yes, so as you said, Amandate, the, the in advance of the report, markets' anticipation of what they thought would be released actually helped to support prices. I would say that the, the results of the report were slightly mixed according to commodity. Um, for wheat alone, implications were actually bearish. Um, a 5 million tonne increase in global production um, was a result of increases for the EU, Russia and Ukraine, and that was as a result of favourable harvest results. Um, we're now looking at 732 million tonnes worth of global production for 15-16. In contrast, Mays, the key messages from the report on Friday were supportive of prices. In line with what markets were expecting, the USDA, the USDA did actually cut their forecast for US yields and thus production for Mays. As the USDA situation, last time around, the USDA cut the EU production estimate for Mays by a fair amount. Did they make further revisions to that? Yeah, they actually did reduce the EU maize production number further in September. Um, so we're now looking at global production levels of 973 million tonnes. Um, still ample in the grand scheme of things, but it is about 30 million tonnes lower than last year. What is interesting to note is that prices have still been rising for maize. And we saw yesterday an increase of 1.60 per tonne for UK feed wheat futures. So that indicates that markets still think that the production number is higher than it actually is in reality. Yeah, so yesterday, I um, think in Chicago, we, um, maize price actually reached a one-month high because everyone's still, the market's still speculating that the number, maize number could be cut further in the next report. And obviously, because wheat and maize are substitutable for one another in animal feed, it's going to have a knock-on effect on wheat prices as well, yeah. hence the rise in UK feed beet futures. Okay, okay so that's... That's the grain side of things. Well, how's the oil seeds market? Um, what were the estimates like for soybeans, etc.? Um, yeah, well, interestingly, the USDA went against what the market expectations were for soybeans. Um, while oil seed markets expected a cut to yields um, for the US crop, um, the USDA actually increased their forecast slightly. But on a global perspective, um, reductions to the Canadian and Ukraine soybean uh, crops meant that production is slightly lower overall and we're also looking at lower stocks than last year. So I would say that the picture for soybeans was actually bullish from the USDA report. Were there any revisions to EU or global rapeseed um, production forecasts? Um, well yeah, looking closer to home, the EU rapeseed um, production number was actually increased. But again, that was offset by reductions for the Indian and Turkey crop. Um, so yeah, but it's an interesting point to note for rapeseed. So on a domestic level, Amadeep, we got the results of the CQS last week. So what's quality looking for the UK crop? Okay, based on the samples we've got so far, which um, 22,000 wheat samples, just under 15,000 barley samples, qualities at the, based on these initial results is looking quite promising. So if we look at wheat, for example, all of the three main parameters that we measure for specific weight, the Hagberg, the protein content, those values were higher year on year and above the three year average. And that excludes 2012 because of the bad weather and poor results in that um, year actually skewed the average. So we're looking at the specific weight, for example, was actually one of the highest on record. Um, what that could potentially mean is that millers are looking at higher extraction rates so they could potentially use um, less wheat to produce the same amount of flour for example. However, one words of caution about, about these results is that, that they are very much biased towards the milling crop. Um, 
almost half of the samples are based on Nabim group ones and about 60% of the samples from the eastern region with about 20% from the southeast region and that's because that's where the crops are harvested first and the group ones and group twos are typically harvested first so there's going to be a bit of a skew towards the better quality results at the moment. So the next, in the next release you'll probably have, we'll have more th group three and four samples. Also, if we look at the actual um, Venn diagram shown here, which just gives you a bit of a snapshot of how much of the results at the moment are meeting full uh, milling wheat spec, you can see that the ones, um, the proportion hitting um, 250 Hagberg, 76 specific weight, and at least 13% protein is about 36%. If we compare this to the same stage um, last year when the provisional results were out, that's almost doubled the um, amount that we've seen. But again, a, a big caveat here is that this is very much biased towards the milling wheat crop at the moment. It's looking promising. There's various issues um, that could affect final results. Um, so what about the impact of the unsettled weller and the rain over the last month or so? Has that had an impact on quality? Yeah, that's an interesting point because, as you know, we had a bit of a, a dry start to the summer followed by very unsettled weather. And the results which, we, which um, these results, the samples which these results were based on, 45% um, of those were analysed after mid-August when rainfall became above average. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that those samples were harvested after that date. It could be that they were in the lab um, waiting to be harvested. So we're not really going to get a clearer picture of what effect the rains had on Hagbergs until probably the next set of results in October. Mm -hmm. um, also, bear, um, bearing in mind what ADAS have um, reported in their latest harvest report, um, which was out last week, they've actually said that in samples that are being harvested at the moment, they've seen specific weights go down by... Um, one kilograms per hectolitre. They've also seen hagbergs fall, but that has been mostly confined to feed wheat um, varieties. So it may be that the milling wheat crop um, may not be affected, but again, we won't know until we get the next set of results in October. Um, and what about barley? What's quality, quality looking this year for barley like? Um, same as wheat, really. So at the moment, we've got promising results. Um, the specific weight um, is higher than last year, above average, and we've also seen a slight increase in nitrogen content. Um, the screening results are showing a slightly lower grain, are showing a lower grain um, size compared with last year, so that may affect alcohol yields um, going forward. But again, um, most of the crop which was harvested was from the eastern region. We've got the bulk of the samples still to come from the north and Scotland, which is you know, a key destination, and that's going to give us a much better um, representation of what UK of what GB barley crop is looking like quality-wise. Those results are going to be out in um, October as well, so make sure you're um, tuned to the AHDB series and oil seeds market website for the latest update on that. And remember to book your place for the Grain Market Outlook Conference in London on the 14th of October for more in-depth analysis on what's happen at the, happening in the markets at the moment.